Well, it is time once again for another squash recipe. This has become kind of a go-to for us, and so I thought I might as well share it with you because it's one of our favorites, to be honest. Now, it's very, very simple, pretty quick considering it's a homemade meal, and uh, I'm gonna walk you through it. So first thing we need to do is roast some squash. So we just make kind of those little one inch, one and a half inch cubes. Uh, we use our Camda Crookneck butternut works fantastic as well, but you want something that stays pretty firm when you cook it. So two cups of that, just a little drizzle of olive oil and some pepper. Okay, a lot of pepper. <laughs> That's where measuring kind of comes into play and a little bit of salt. And basically all we're going to do is toss it around and spread that onto our uh, cookie sheet with our little, it's not parchment, but the silicone kind of protective cover. And we're going to roast this in the oven for 25 minutes. I do find sometimes I broil it off right at the end just to kind of get those crispy edges because I like that. It's not required, but eh, I recommend it. So we're going to do that and then we're going to move on. So basically you are frying up an onion, nice small onion. We're going to get that till it's nice and kind of, uh, you know, that translucent sort of starting to brown. And then tonight we're putting it with our goose breast. Now this is already cooked and sliced beautiful meat. You can put any meat you want into this, whether it was chicken, rabbit, uh, beef, sliced beef would work very much the same way. But what I do is I don't want this overcooked, so I just kind of am going to toss it in right at the end to just fry up a little tiny bit and heat up. So we're going to hold on to that, let the onions cook, and we're going to get our pasta started because we're uh, only about 15 minutes or so away from putting this all together in a dish. So as you can see, our onions are nice and brown. Our pasta is basically cooked up and our squash is broiling at the moment to get nice brown and crispy. So we're, so we're going to put our meat into the uh, frying pan now and get that started to get warm. And we're going to work on our, quote, sauce. Our sauce for this is very simple. Two little pucks of our homemade garlic scape pesto. Each puck is probably about a quarter of a cup, I'm going to say. I do tend to make my pesto quite dry. You can see that here. So what I do is put a little bit of extra olive oil in now and some water out of my pasta and swirl it around until it's kind of liquidy enough to uh, coat everything. So that's where we're at right now. So we put in a little bit of olive oil and we're just going to put in a little bit of water from that pasta and we're just going to get it swirling around. You could just use olive oil, but I don't like it to be that greasy. That's why I switched to... Uh, using the, um, the moisture from the pasta. But, I might have to add a little bit more to be honest. Each thing of pesto seems to come out a little bit different. Some are thicker than others because they were from different batches. Nope, that looks really good. Perfect, so we're gonna drain off our pasta, get it in here with our meat and onions, and then we're gonna toss the squash in right at the end. So our pasta is in there. We're just gonna toss it around as you can see. Get that pesto covering everything. Oh, it looks perfect already. It smells amazing. I wish you could smell it. Like I said, this is a go-to, super simple recipe. And you can use whatever meat you want in there. Like I said, we just happen to have this wonderful half goose breast that we'd already cooked. If you haven't already cooked it, make sure you fry it with your onions um, and get it all well cooked before you mix it in here, obviously. And our next step is going to be getting our Canada Crookneck squash from the oven and tossing it in here. There it is. As you can see, it's kind of just gotten a little bit crisped up. Almost burnt. I almost got complacent there. Woo, my oven mitts are really getting hot. Toss it in there. A little bit of salt just to give it a bit more flavoring. I don't do too much because people can put what they want on it at the time. Toss it in and voila, that's going on our plates and it's that simple. Once it's on the plate, I put Parmesan cheese and dried parsley on top just to make it look pretty and bon appetit. And there we are. Of course, I like my cheese. 
And then just a little bit of parsley. This was dried out of the garden last fall. And there we go. Let's go eat.